Hi everybody, my name is Dave Ball. I'm with the Aqua Accelerator team from Second Muse, part of the Blue Economy Challenge. We're here as part of an initiative led by the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade at the Innovation Exchange. About a year ago, we launched a campaign to find the 10 most innovative aquaculture companies around the world. And we're super excited today to be joined by Donna Kwan from the United Nations Environmental Program and by Thibaut and Olivier, who are representing one of our fellows, Indian Ocean Trepang. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Donna Kwan. I am based in Abu Dhabi and I work for the Convention on Migratory Species and we are under the UN Environment Program. I look after a MOU on dugongs and one of our primary jobs is to try and look after the ecosystems that they depend on. And they're very dependent on seagrass ecosystems. Hi, I am Timo Giulioli. I am um, working for Indian Ocean Trepang and this is a company we created five years ago we were uh, disappointed to see that poverty and overfishing was really a challenge for Madagascar and that's what led us to create this sea cucumber aquaculture operation. Hi, I am Olivier Mero from Indian Ocean Trepang. As told uh, uh, Thibault, we have created this company uh, five years ago. Uh, and before we were doing some, uh, some fishing, we are buying fishing from village. And this, this new aquaculture uh, was uh, an idea to find a um, new opportunity for a village, coastal village, to do less pressure on their environment with fishing and to find a new opportunity of, uh, of a sustainable uh, uh, aquaculture. In terms of impact of the communities we partner with, they manage to double their monthly income from about 44 US dollars a month to 88 US dollars a month. And the first use they do of this additional money would be for education for their children. So they bring, this brings a gender equality opportunity for boys and girls to go to school and to learn and to have a better education. First, we have met some, some, some people like Donna, uh, Thibault will speak about, and uh, also with uh, John, which are in Tanzania, and we have started uh, to, uh, to discuss uh, the possibility of extending uh, a new operation uh, in Tanzania. On the other side, we are, we are working actually also uh, in Mozambique to see if it's possible. So, with the Blue Economy Challenge, we are really accelerate uh, this, uh, this potential international development. Thanks to the Blue Economy Challenge, we have been uh, very lucky to get to Odona. And in the past few months, we looked at possibilities of scaling our business model into Thailand, southern part of Thailand, where at the same time, Dona is working on human conservation and could eventually introduce sea cucumber back in the natural environment where they have more or less disappeared due to the overfishing. When we think about dugongs and then we think about sea cucumbers, the connection maybe isn't made for everybody. So maybe you could share a little bit about how um, you've been talking to the folks at Indian Ocean Trepang as well as another one of our fellows, Energaya, based in Thailand, about using these different social enterprises um, and connecting those to dugong conservation. My job is to try and support those countries that have dugongs and seagrasses in them. Um, and a lot of that job is around helping local communities look after their bait backyards. And by backyards, I mean their seagrass habitats that they depend on um, for food and livelihoods. So in terms of um, the sea cucumbers um, and in terms of spirulina production, indeed, I guess a lot of people wouldn't match up those two things um, 
in the same place but actually in terms it's easier with sea cucumbers because Dippo has already hinted that that that's the sea cucumbers natural habitat anyway and the sea cucumber is one of those species that has have has got quite high value and it's very easily over exploited in in its area the unexpected outcomes are often some of the most exciting and i think you've kind of spearheaded donna quite the kind of partnership between not only these communities um unep um, our fellows but as well as some private um private kind of companies in the private sector as well who are interested in, in contributing To kind of wrap it up, what is the what is the future of aquaculture, and and how do we use aquaculture as a driver, as you're already doing, to protect our oceans and our waters, um, and also use it as something that provides food security and livelihoods? It's an opportunity there with with you know careful considerations in terms of the positive benefits and and to look carefully at the risks and and the adverse um, incentives. I think it's like most things, if you can find the right incentives for um, the right protection, the long going sustainability. Um, I think that's the challenge for us. There's, there's a way forward um, to bring um, conservation and aquaculture together in, in a win-win situation. And I hope that the partnerships that, that we can nurture with um, Indian Ocean Trepang and with Enagai will prove that there is a way to move forward on both conservation and aquaculture. We have, I would say, only about 200 families who have become farmers of sea cucumber in the southwest of Madagascar. Mm -hmm. Our vision is within 10 years to have 10 operations across the Indian Ocean and to impact the lives of 6,000 families. Now, one of the innovations of our approach is scalability. Uh, the way we set up our fully fledged integrated operations is such that it is easy to do a copy paste and to bring what we have developed in another country. Uh, the, also, what is good is that it is a generator of uh, economic empowerment to communities where usually the husband would still do the fishing activity and the wife then would become the farmer and all the communities become, from a social and economic point of view, uh, enhanced, both at the community level and at the family level. So that's our vision, basically. 10 operations, 6,000 families impacted, and, and work as we do today, as a quapartite operation, still work with NGOs to initiate the work with those coastal villages work with universities on the biology of sea cucumbers and work with all those fishermen, villagers and families with whom we, we couldn't do. Um, I know I was at a conference a couple weeks ago and they said I had to meet these folks from, from Madagascar. And I, I, they started, I started to pick around and they're like, have you met this guy named Thibaut and his and his mm -hmm. friend Olivier? I was like, oh yeah, they're, we were fortunate enough to have them as a fellow. Um, so you guys are a really kind of shining, shining star and leading example in the industry. And, and congratulations and, and really excited that along with Donna, you're um, looking for new partnerships and new ways to have impact. I want to thank all three of you, um, Olivier, Thibaut and Donna for, uh, for joining us today on World Oceans Day. For those of you who are viewing, if you'd like to learn more and to kind of follow the progress of, of this project that we talked about today, as well as um, Donna's work with Dugong's, Thibault and Olivier's work in Madagascar um, with Indian Ocean Trepang, you can visit the blueeconomychallenge.com or follow us at hashtag Aquacelerator on social media for the latest updates. Um, once again, happy World Oceans Day, everybody, and thanks so much for joining. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.